Hi, happy Friday. <laughs> Hope you all are having a great day and um, that you're staying warm. It's getting chilly here. So yeah, um, I thought I'd come on and see how everybody's doing and like um, have a chat about what's in the airwaves, what's um, going on with everybody throughout the week. And hi everyone, I see you're all joining. Hi, last time I came on, I did some readings through the question mark box at the bottom. And I always realize that then I can't really see all the comments in the feed. <laughs> so maybe today we'll kind of shift it up a little bit. Hi Layla, hi Heal Your Life, hi Steven. Hi, Forever Learning. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So, um, how's everybody today? I feel like um, there's some new friends here and also some of us that have met and worked together in the past. So, my name is Amy and my background is in nursing and hypnotherapy and I also now work in the world of what I do is energy therapy and readings. And so, I use like clairvoyant abilities and the clerk gifts to communicate. And so I like to just, you know, connect with others that are feeling that we resonate in that, <laughs> in that way of understanding what it's like to be empathic or in tune and wanting to like bring some goodness to the earth and to life. So, oh my gosh, Riffy, hi, you just moved to Houston. Well, welcome. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Hope you enjoy it. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, it just got cold today, so you know, the energy, the weather kind of shifts around. But I mean, we can take some questions, um, like reading kind of questions, but I was also feeling just chatting like for the collective and what are some themes that have been coming through this week. So in my personal sessions that I've been doing, and then I also just had a really yummy conversation that'll come out in a few weeks on the podcast. There have been um, some topics that I think, you know, well, I don't think I know. I've experienced them coming through that might be fun to chat about a little bit and then flow into other things that are coming uh, through or questions that you all have. But I would say like kind of a consistent theme, a continuation for the past couple of months was that, um, first of all, to like get our health and our energetic health in check, you know, so that we can be in a space to connect with others or be in our a space to serve or to bring through whatever we're here on earth to experience and to help with. And so for those of us who resonate with that idea or that calling of our heart, it's like we have to feel healthy and really fueled within, right? So that's number one. So that's a given. Like what I'm about to share, that's already been taken care of. So now, <laughs> like with the message that's coming through is um, step up. Like step into it. It's time to go. It's time to work. So we go through ebbs and flows. And many of us have had these moments where we like go within and we kind of recluse from the world uh, for healing and integration and our own self-discoveries. And when we get the message, it's like, okay, this is what, you know, might be coming next, or this is the aspect of wisdom that we're needing to help us heal and move forward. But when we get that message, then shortly after is go time. Like we'll feel the vibration, that push from spirit, that gentle nudge to go and move forward. So um, in my life, I'm about like eight weeks into that, like move forward, Amy, it's time for a new phase. I'm like, yes, okay, cool. Been working on a lot of projects, doing a lot of things in different areas like, um, you know, podcast and book and retreats that all are taking some kind of organization and time behind the scenes before I can share and offer those. And you know, it'll all, it'll all come about, like the books and the podcasts are there now if anybody's interested. So the podcast is Spirit and Soul Healing Podcast. Um, but I'm in this space now where I'm like, okay, cool, like more personal interaction. So I'm loving that. I'm loving to be able to come on here and share with you all. And the messages that I've been seeing in pattern this week, so we're gonna start with personal care, and then stepping forward like autonomy and responsibility and that flows into responsibility of energy self 
Um, and so a big label is boundaries. That term has been talked about many times and discussed, but it's coming up again. And in this way, um, in my experience and the way that it's coming through in readings has a different like angle or aspect to it, like a little different flavor of <laughs> the energy that comes with it. It feels a little different and that this is like a boundary way of understanding how to hold this space and hold like this beautiful light and compassionately observe and give or share or receive like conversation and awareness without taking it on and carrying it. And if you think about your aura as this glowing emanating energy field around you, typically at the edge of it, you might see a little bit more of like a glow, like where it emanates off. And, and we can share energy through that and we can receive at the edge of our aura, we can feel messages and information and then what we align with or what we agree to, to converse with, we let it come into our body and we process it in our chakra spaces. So energetically speaking. <laughs> um, and so in those experiences, we are called to like be in a space of, is this conversation beneficial and healthy? Is it something that I can support right now? And by that, it's like, will you be able to have this conversation and not drain you or be emotionally upsetting? And um, the word I'm hearing is discharging energy. So I'm looking like an engine that's, um, they're showing me like an engine that's stuttering and it's puff, puff, puffing, like it's ch -ch -ch -ch, like chugging along because something clogged the system. And so some of these conversations and topics and experiences can stall our system down and clog us up when it was like, gosh, girl, why did you even take that road anyways? Like, why are you driving over here? That's not anywhere on how you're supposed to get to your final goal or destination. So this is just an analogy or an idea of it because I could go into a whole other tangent about how life is to explore and have fun. But what they're showing and talking about is direction and boundaries of our choices to help us have the experience that we really want to have. And number one will be like your conversations. Um, I work with the Archangels and Archangel Metatron's one to help with boundaries. And he's saying, look, it's not like we're not being compassionate and kind. We're just saying this isn't working out for me today. Like maybe we can talk about it tomorrow or not at all. <laughs> but that's one thing that's been really, really coming up because I've been getting a lot of readings where people are drained. We're like emotionally spent, we're energetically taxed, trying to do um, a lot in different areas when it's kind of like um, clarity and focus on, you know, pick one avenue right now because we all have these gifts, we all have these skills, and we all have ones that we really are successful. Like, it's like our top, quality, um, best talent or gift or codes of light that we're holding. And we want to utilize those in a way where they really like, um, I mean, I hit the target, right? Like it, it, it lands and it's felt and it resonates and it helps rather than taking all of our energy and just like spreading it out there in an undefined way without intention, just saying, oh, here I am. You know, I'm going to let my energy shine and that can be, but it could be felt dilutedly across many experiences. Like, um, a good example would be, let's say you have like your family, a group of friends and a group of colleagues, and you talk to everybody the whole entire week and then you're exhausted by the end of the week. So it's kind of like maybe reserve more of your conversation for one particular avenue for that week and the one that you feel like they're actually going to hear you and value you and it's not like you're, I'm hearing, <laughs> you know, a Charlie Brown where they're doing wah, 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 wah. Yeah, so it's not like that. Like they really resonate and you have that heart space interaction like they hear you and you feel like you're providing something of benefit. So that's the first thing I wanted to share. And I'm going to um, just check here <laughs> in your guys' comments. So thank you, thank you for, for sharing your comments here um, in the chat. Let's see. Oh, uh, hi. <laughs> hey, Embody Healing. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Rachel. Hi, everybody. 
Um, let's see. Okay, heal your life. You're sharing. You've seen this playing out with all of your therapy clients. The universe is hard at work activating people that are here to give to the world. Yeah. And I feel like, um, let me call us a seer. Seers. Those who can see, you know, energy or see visions or have an understanding of what's happening and what's to come. I feel like many of us went into this space of self I'm hearing self-preservation. That's the guides talking. So I was gonna say like self-care or hibernation. They're like, Amy, <laughs> oops, sorry, my dog. They're saying, Amy, self-preservation. Like we were containing our energy in a way in which we wouldn't become depleted and spent. And now it's like, all right, you got it. You understand how to proceed forward activation time to go so that makes so much uh, sense and I love to hear that you're sharing that as well and I love when I can um, hear from others and it's just like resonating across the board because um, one it just helps me to really understand it brings it home that we're all here working together and we ebb and we flow with the times and those of us that are here for particular missions our missions will present themselves in ways in seasons and moments they'll present themselves in these seasons and moments in ways which were responding to what the collective needs so here we're all being called to step up a little bit more and what they're showing me right now is um there's a whole group of souls that are like having their new awakening or reset on reality let's say um, shifting careers or jobs, well, same thing, but I'm seeing two things, <laughs> careers and jobs and moving. Like some are shifting career and job where they're, they're at home still or in the same community, but some are being called to move physically. Some of us are being called to reevaluate our relationships and some of us are being called to reevaluate our self-care practices. Like what have we not been addressing or what have we been over addressing and where can we put our energy? So in that, we are going to be responding in a different way. And those of us that have kind of uh, been quiet for a little bit, just feeling what's coming, feeling the energy of the collective, we should have a sense of knowing what that is. Um, and if you don't, I feel like it'll be coming very soon. And so you just take one baby step in front of the other so that you can you can activate, like you can make those physical steps to let it um, play out. And I'm hearing like create a platform so it can play out. So we're using intention, we're utilizing messages that we've received, we're harnessing the energy that we feel come in. And now our mental body and our mind can say, how do I want that structured? And I promise there's an audience there's a community. There are new, like if I'm talking, you know, in our world with spirit healers or hypnotherapists, maybe life coach or whatever, you know, we all offer a service in whatever ways, if it is our job or if it's just who we are in life, whatever it might be, there are others that can highly benefit from what we have to share, especially like if you're here, I feel like there's a resonating frequency. We have a lot in common. So you know, those of us that have lived through quite a bit can share that. Those of us that have been through trauma and not like figure out how to heal it and now hold peace in our nervous system, we can share that. We can begin to help others understand that. So yeah, thank you for sharing. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what's gonna come through today. I'm just called to come on and then boom, all this information comes in. So thank you, Angela. Thank you for your life. They're saying, yes, this is so big right now. Massive shifts in the collective. I think I'm a little bit behind in comments, but um, Layla, haha, ha, spot on and resonates so deeply. And Melanie resonates. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, hi, Ms. Liz. Um, you're sharing. This is the second time I've heard someone say Sears today in regards to this energy. Oh, that is so cool that there are certain seers. I love this spirit is the best. Yeah, I heard that message. So um, that to me in my life was like not a word that I heard a lot. Maybe as a child and I didn't understand it. Like I would think mystics and seers and psychics. But to me, seers, you know, it's those of us who connect to 
the future or the energy and we can implement it or integrate it in a way within our being that we bring that energy into a mental understanding or a physical um well, we'll just physicalize it like we ground it in here. And so a lot of series we'll see into the future. And that's what the message was coming through earlier. Like we had that chance to go within and have our quiet space to heal, recollect um, our energies, integrate, and then we would be shown things. And um, to that, like now, let's say, well, I'm, I'm a seer, but I'm being called to really work with what's actually happening in this now moment. Same thing. So seers are visionaries, they receive messages, they feel and they hear, and they can cognitively put it into a vision or um, clairvoyantly actually like they'll watch the vision. Sometimes our guides talk to us in stories like we're watching a movie and we see the vision in that way. Sometimes it's a message that, you know, we like a story where we can put it into words and share our vision. And other times when we see visions, we're actually bilocating or what's the word they call it? Remote viewing, where we're actually going through space or time and space because it depends. You pick the time that you want to land in or see and you can clairvoyantly view it in that remote viewing way. But what's really coming through now, they're talking about seer, is to see through, um, is this a word? How do I say this word? Disingenuous. Okay, it means like what's not genuine. <laughs> if there's a word that exists like that, type it in the box. But that's what they're saying. Like to see through things that are not genuine, um, like heartfelt or truthful. So to see through shadiness. <laughs> that's my word, shady. It's shady. <laughs> so the seers can see through and pass these facades. And also we can see through, um, when we're working with somebody, the pain. Like we can see we can see and understand and compassionately be there to hold space for somebody who's in a space of pain and understand where the source is originating and if we're called to, if they invite us in and we feel in alignment with it, how we can help them. So this is taking it to such a mystical, deep, spiritual space in that the seers right now are being called to understand and implement activation like understand and then from that say how am I called to help or serve and um, I want to make sure that you all don't feel overwhelmed there's so much happening in the world right now don't feel like you have to take it all on be okay with saying no or understanding within yourself. I see this is happening, but I'm not being guided that I'm the best person to help with that right now. And um, a good example of that is like, I'll have healer friends that they specialize in certain modalities or specialize in certain areas of trauma. And um, so then like, I'll refer people to them and I learn from them and I feel that they learn from me too. So if you're feeling like, well, I could help in a higher quality way if I put my energy or maybe hold it for a second because I feel something coming to me like next week or tomorrow. So you don't have to jump on it. This isn't a call to action like, hey, go, like be spastic with your energy. It's more a call to action and be discerning. Keep your energy reserves in check. So we started this conversation with us, them reminding us of health of our boundary for spiritual health because um, think of it in this way of like an energy field around you that's full of light and if it gets depleted it's hard to function so that's what they're talking about is keeping your energy reserves up um, and so back to the seer it's about seeing it understanding it observing it don't take all of the energy into your system but be aware of it and then ask when and how in which ways can I help? And right now what they're sharing is that's what we're being led to understand is like many of us have got the answer and we're just starting that, like taking those action items, steps, you know, in our mind. So spirit and energy comes in. You can't see my hands. <laughs> it comes in from around us. Oh gosh, if I put my hands like that, they look huge. But it, <laughs> it comes in from around us. 
It comes into the physical existence and then it's up to us to translate it and transcribe it into a linear word or format or a structure that we can then utilize in the physical realm when we're taking action in this way. And when we're taking action in this way, we are also utilizing the support of spirit in that we flow, we're riding the wave in a sense, or we're waiting for that energy to come and um, and carry us through. So the picture they're showing me is like you have a raft, or you want to, you know, go on a little boat, and you get it all ready, and you're waiting there, and you've packed your picnic or whatever you need, your fishing pole. I don't know what you guys take on a boat, but <laughs> whatever you need. And then um, this boat they're showing me. It has a tiny engine, but that's not really what they're going for here. It's like you're waiting for the river to come and bring you to where you are supposed to go. And along the way, the journey of it, the experience of what you get to see along the way. So it's preparation so the energy can carry you through. Um, and they're showing me this little engine because that engine, is it called a rudder? I think it is. <laughs> we have the, within us the ability to um, push forward and to stall, like, you know, forward and back, and also to steer. So they're saying, you know, this is about co-creating in the sense that you got a message, you've taken implementation into preparing to be able to expand in your journey by looking at protocol for safety, security, health and well-being, and also education, like what might you need to support you in the next phase. And then you prepare and then you wait or you're ready. You anticipate it. Like I'm looking up the river. I can see the water coming, right? And then you flow with it. So that's an example of a strong message that's coming through. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> um, Hill Your Life is saying January is feeling like it's going to be a very potent time for light workers. I think so too. Like I literally have been feeling different waves of energy come in. And the way that these are like really, it's an inviting thing, like I like it. Because what's happening is these waves of energy that I've felt are signals that are telling me something's coming. Like you can feel these waves from the future. And a lot of us seers and light workers, you know, mystics, intuitives that feel this, we get a hit, like we get an understanding of what's coming in the future and then we can understand how to digest or integrate or compartmentalize it and kind of put it in that linear way within ourselves, so that when it happens, we've kind of already prepped within our own psyche and energy field to be able to support the community and those that come to us. And this, this happens all the time. You guys probably felt this, like I'll have something happen like that they bring to me, hey, Amy, remember this? Or, hey, Amy, look at this, you know, perspective in my own reality. And then like a month or three weeks or something later, I'll get client after client after client that's going through something really similar. And um, it's nice because, um, you know, they'll be able to share with them their specific messages. And then at times I can share, hey, I kind of went through something similar and I, I get you and this is what helped me, you know, so... But yeah, it feels like January, something's definitely um, coming down, down the pipeline. Um, so I see some personal kind of questions coming through. So maybe I'll, um, just let me just make sure that I've caught up with everything. Hi Trish, you made it. Oh my gosh, girl, yay. <laughs> oh, disingenuous, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that is the word. I like could piece it together, but it was hard to find it. That's something I was talking to my friend about in this class that I'm taking is like how our mind works. And when we channel, we're kind of trying to go back to this still point so the messages can come in. And at times we have this glimpse, like this little blip of aphasia, which is where you forget words or how to grammar, put it together. And I mean, I was like saying, you know, I'm really intelligent. Like I, I don't have any problems saying that. I can carry on amazing conversations, but sometimes when I channel, I'm like, oh gosh, I feel it so strong. Where's the word? <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. And thank you for the badge, Trish. Oh, you're so sweet. Hi, Violet Flame Goddess. Hey, love. 
um, how your life says we can only activate others after we get clear with ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of going back to the importance of um, an energetic boundary so we're not absorbing all this other energy and trying to figure like, what is that? Or being overwhelmed with emotions and thoughts and then that becomes the focus of our day when really those aren't our emotions and thoughts. And if they are our own emotions and thoughts, you know, we want to heal through that, um, kind of do some interpersonal work or shadow work or inner child work, whatever, whatever it might be. But okay, so, oh, hi everyone. <laughs> oh, Natalie says I'm having a baby in January, so hopefully it's nothing stressful. Oh, congrats, girl. I think, I don't think, yeah, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> also, I know you're in tune, so you'll feel the messages come through to prepare you if anything comes up. Um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, hi everybody. Oh, Melanie, hi from Sydney, Australia. Hello, hi. I'm in Texas today, so woo woo. <laughs> okay, so I see some questions. Um, there was a couple in the chat, but if y'all put them down, like, in the question mark box area, that helps me to stay organized with it. <laughs> that would be good. And so let me go in here and see what kind of um, questions. Let's see. Um, okay, Nadia, I'm like just attracted to your question. So let's see what you, what you have to ask here. Hi, Amy. I've been working on staying focused and less distracted. Would love any message for me from the Archangels or Spirit Guides. Oh, yeah. That's so, <laughs> it's so perfect for the topic. Um, but let's see what they're saying. Let's see what they're saying. It's funny. They're talking about color coding. Are you putting things in a spreadsheet? Or within your own mind, do you compartmentalize through color coding? So they're talking about color coding, and um, that's a good way that they can talk to you because, like, if you have one area of what you're focusing on is purple, and then one is orange, you know, green, blue, or what have you, you might get a meditation where you see that color or you feel that color come in, and it can be like a message, like, "Hey." Go check out your purple, <laughs> your purple column of responsibilities today. So they say that you're doing a good job. It looks pretty organized and they're just bringing in this aspect of color coding, which is kind of cool. Do you already do that? I don't know, but I like to work with colors. Chromotherapy is really healing. So it's also a way in which you can say, you know, what color am I going to pick for this aspect, this part of my life, this responsibility? Um, column and there's some deeper messages behind that so yeah it's like a journaling experience in a way too but kind of simple but kind of like oh you know like deep if you really think about it so implement that and see how it flows it will help you with your um yeah with staying focused and keeping it all aligned um let's see um emily or i'm oh, sorry read it backwards <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to do Empower with Marilyn and then we'll go to Melanie. Um, like I'm literally smiling and laughing right now because um, I have a sister named Melanie. I have a sister named Emily and like I kind of read those two together <laughs> and it came out the way that it did. So we'll start with Marilyn. Um, this is wild and it's like not even important, but I also have an aunt named Marilyn. So what in the world? <laughs> Just so random, but um, hi, Amy. My foundations have been shaken around my daughter. Any advice? Okay, let me tune in for you. Um, I mean, I'm like first feeling um, this vibration of kind of shock and a little bit of betrayal and literally like I don't quite know if you are finding that betrayal and grief to be related to things that she's done um, because there's also this feeling like with life in general, like spirit, like how did it turn out this way? Um, so what they're sharing for you, they say you, um, you're, you're searching for peace of mind and peace of heart and, um, that peace and that clarity within yourself and your guides are saying, as a mother and a human, you can do um, only do so much. You can only do what you can do. Uh, and the rest of it is up to free will choices and spiritual paths of others. And so 
healing yourself within, like healing your heart. I feel your heart and your abdomen taking care and support for you and really going into that space of like integrity. So if you feel that you misstepped or you misspoke or you need to apologize for something, you can do that and that will help you. But this is about like within you in this way. Um, and it's just, they're just talking about healing so you can come into balance and also have things like be shown to you from a new space of clarity. So I'm hoping that helps. Um, I would say to take that a little bit further, what helps you feel peaceful? What helps you feel relaxed? And um, they want to share, you know, meditating and journaling. But meditating for you sometimes can, I was funny, but kind of do the opposite because then you can get stressed out. Like, am I doing this right? I keep thinking about stuff. So if you need to process, they want you to journal and go for more like of these meditative walks where you can clear your head, you can clear your energy walking in nature. Um, I mean, I, I feel like this is going to be a little while for your healing process, but at the end of it, you're going to feel so strong and supported and like spirits there for you. So it's a lot of, it's brought up a lot of inner kind of healing stuff. And again, they're kind of going back to like that you can only do what you can do. They literally don't want you to beat yourself up. So hopefully that helps. Um, a lot of us who are really like conscious and compassionate hold ourselves to a higher standard. And we just need to know that we can really only do what we what we're shown or what we're guided to do and as long as we stay in integrity and and really like morally try and be the best person that we can we shouldn't get upset with ourselves if we were surprised by something we didn't know um and we shouldn't be upset with ourselves for decisions that others make is what they're sharing so i hope that i hope that helps <laughs> Okay, let me go to our next question. Um, why? Oh, wait. Yeah, I was going to go. Hold on. I already promised. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh, Melanie, hi. <laughs> okay, so Melanie, hi, Amy. Any guidance around moving on? I'm moving out into a new home, please. And thank you. Okay, so, um, you know, it's funny because I feel like some of the same words are coming through here on this live. Um I'm hearing structure and planning and, and guidance in that way. So they show me like boxes moving and, and getting it all on paper or in your head, the steps that you're gonna take and leaving some space open for, uh-oh, like things that come up. And like a funny example is if you're moving and a box breaks open and you have to pick it up, right? So leave, give yourself some extra time so that you don't get super, super stressed out about it. Um, and this is all in the physical world kind of stuff that they're showing me, but they want to let you know that it's speaking to what's happening underneath. The more organized and, um, like aware of, of an idea or a plan that you have, it will help you to relax. And then that way, if something kind of comes up again, it's like, I could only prepare and do what I could do. And so you feel like you had your back because you didn't set yourself up for failure um, but at the same time, what they're sharing is this outer vision that they're showing this outer perspective is speaking to how the peace can be felt within so that when you move and when you get into your new space and surroundings, you can gently flow into it. And the organizing of the boxes is like, so you know where to put things, but also is to help you spiritually and energetically as you are infusing your new space with your energy, it's more of like, um, you can look at it more of like a ceremonial experience, right? Like a transition um, of life where it's more than just the items. It's more than a checklist. It's more than all of that. It's, it's also your energy and all the energy that you had in that space in the home also the space and time because our home represents a period of time, whether we lived there for a month or 10 years, right? It represents a spirit of growth and development. It also holds within it our frequency, our energy. So you wanna 
bless the space, but take your energy with you. Don't leave it there. And it also holds within um, that space of time relationships. And so they're saying as you're packing up consciously and you're labeling things, you'll find things that you want to like say, I'm not going to take this into the next chapter of my life. And it's way beyond the physical. It's also what does it represent, the energy that it holds. So then as you're unpacking a box, if you bring it into that house and you're like, wait a minute, I really felt like I loved this like at my last space and it just doesn't feel like I need that now. So they're talking about honor that energy and release it, like let it go. So um, so this is a big spiritual experience too. It's not just physical. <laughs> so I hope that really helps. So they're saying just to be aware, like emotions can come up, plan as much as you can, but allow for wiggle room. Allow for extra time to process things, allow for extra space within it. So as much as you can, if you're on a strict schedule, like, you know, then do the best that you can. But yeah, that's what they're sharing. Hi, everyone. Hi, Erica. Hey, everybody that's joining. Welcome, welcome. I guess I want to say that, um, oops, <laughs> sorry. I have this little table here. Um, I guess I want to say that I just will be coming on lives as I'm feeling inspired. Like there's really no set schedule. I probably won't announce it ahead of time um, because I just come on when, when I feel within myself that I'm in a space to um, channel information without my own distractions and um, when I'm guided, like I just feel inspired. So if you want to connect the lives, um, put your notifications on and it'll let you know when I go live. Yeah. So um, awesome. Awesome. Um, Violet Flame Goddess. Okay, thank you. Marie Kondo's Spark Joy Technique really helps with the moving. Yeah, you're right. Yes, um, that's awesome. I've heard of her. I haven't read any of her books, but I've heard of that um, technique. And I've moved so many times, so many times. So I've been through it quite a bit, but like, um, I always try to infuse the spiritual way of it. Not so much feng shui, because I went that route, but... Um, and I, and I value feng shui, but it's not like I've built my own houses. <laughs> feng shui can be very detailed, you know, your house facing a certain way and all of this. Um, but there was a book, um, let me see if I can see it. It's like healing sacred spaces or something that I read. It talks about in Bali, how they clear space and dedicate space when they move. And um, maybe it was called Space Clearing Techniques. I'll find it. I'll put the notes like in the caption for the replay. I'll put the name of it. But yeah, so thank you for that. And thank oh, thanks for the badges, everyone. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. I really appreciate that. A little bonus for the day. <laughs> Feeling all the love. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the question mark um, section. So if you have a question, put it in the section. And let's see. Hi, Angela. Okay, so Embody Healing. Hi, Amy. Do you have any message for people who give more than they receive, especially when there feels to be a relationship that wants to draw them back to an old timeline and their past self? Oh, yes, this is coming up so much. Um, be your own advocate is like kind of one of the topic themes here. And... Um, and not having to over explain about yourself, not having to um, give, give, give to justify why you're making decisions. So why do we give more than we receive? Well, either we're a really compassionate person or we feel like we have to justify our actions and, or make sure somebody doesn't like feel bad about it, right? That we're not hurting feelings and that kind of a thing. But you need to think about your own energy and your own feelings and like, is that appropriate? Is it healthy for you? So I would say it's a good time for us to reevaluate our energy reserves, our relationships, and what within us could be shifted. Like what have we allowed to continue in a pattern because again, if you consistently are giving without receiving, number one, it's just not like fair. It's just not cool. It's not really a kind way of it. So why would you put yourself in any positions that aren't a kind kind of experience? Um, but you'll be depleted. You'll be drained. And then you won't be able to help yourself or others at all in the future. And there's a lot of different ways to look at like, what does that mean, giving and receiving? 
because some people can give and you can receive in one way and then you can give and they can receive in another way like some of our strongest skill sets i guess it's like if you're thinking of it in a certain way kind of like a bartering system with energy um it doesn't always have to be tit for tat black and white you know like maybe one message or conversation from you that you help somebody through like maybe that takes half an hour to an hour but then they say that literally saved me and changed my life like I was in the space that I was just really about to like spiral down and you were there for me thank you and now I see you're moving next week what can I do to help you I don't mind I have the whole day like I could dedicate the day to you right so it can be things like that so it's really feel the energy and the intention behind it but healers have to put boundaries we have to advocate for ourselves or we're never really gonna make it like we will become so overburdened and depleted that it just won't be sustainable so setting yourself up for success in that way so important and um you know that's in a healing space or a friendship space but also in a relationship space um relationships for them to be successful both parties need to be like on board and giving to the best that they can if you've been with somebody for a long long time and you're just going through seasons and changes um, then you might say, okay, they really need me. Like they are going through something these next three months is going to be more about them. But in the future or potentially in the past, they were there for me when I needed it. So again, it's not like a, um, a tit for tat kind of thing, but it is a heart space awareness, like compassionate care. And also we need to speak up for ourselves. Like, Hey, I wish I could be there for you, but I'm really being drained by this. Let me help you find like a professional or another way of it, right? So we want to be there to support. Many of us are really community-based, loving. You know, we want to be there to help the whole because we understand that this shift on earth is a whole collective experience. So we really often find we want to be there for others, but we need to make sure we take care of ourselves too, like ourselves first. And also that even for ourselves, you know, that we're not being um, depleted or taking a back row seat, but also like look at the other responsibilities. For example, if you are a parent, like if you have children, I mean, they come first, right? Like you need to think about that. So your friends should recognize like, okay, I would love to be there for you, but I have to go get my kids from school or help them with their homework. So it's all about discernment. And in the chat, somebody mentioned intuition, that too, like intuition and discernment and really putting a boundary up for um, to protect the energy reserve that you have and the space that you have so you can support the relationships and commitments that you've agreed to that were like your top priorities. So uh, I hope that helps, Angela. That's just what came through. <laughs> so thanks for the question. Yeah, it's like a whole other way of talking about the significant importance of boundaries. And um, Boundaries can be defined in a variety of ways and shared through different examples. So these are just a few of them. And I actually had a conversation today that's going to come out in a few weeks on the podcast on boundaries. Um, within the spiritual community and within the healing arts and it it highlights other areas that we didn't talk about so <laughs> be ready for that you might enjoy it when it comes out and thank you liz for the badge you're so sweet thank you hi star clan hi boho beauty hi everybody okay so i am going to take the questions in the question mark box so i see some of them in the chat like in the feed but um let's do the question mark box helps me stay organized okay so this one just popped out to me the big princess any guidance on feeling stuck yeah um they're talking about stagnation of energy in the mental body and also your solar plexus and some energies like pushing up into your heart space so there's actually stagnation within your energy within the body and that can Mm, what's a word it's a disservice in a way because it can throttle you back like you want to go 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 and it's like er, hold on bump in the road we gotta you know like go over this first 
So if you can clear and smooth out that energy, that will best help you. And it's not just mental and it's not just energetic, it's a combination. So um, you could stretch and dance and exercise. And then you could also like eat healthy, like do a lot of drinking, detox kind of cleanses. And I'm getting, I keep seeing you stretching. So stretching exercise, maybe like yoga or something in that way. And um, sound, like you can use some mantras or crystal or Tibetan bowls to break up that energy and move it out. And then um, then to enhance, I'm seeing, I'm seeing food and I'm also seeing essential oils. So these are some ways to help you clear that stuck energy um, because then you'll start to be able to have your system flowing and we receive a lot of inspiration and information through our chakras and also the mental field of your mental body. And it looks a little cloudy and, you know, clogged up because the solar plexus feeds the mental body. So, um, yeah, so working on the solar plexus and then all the exercises that they shared will help you to feel like, oh, my gosh, I can do this now. I all of a sudden feel inspired and I have the energy to do it and that the, the thoughts come to you. So, yeah. So hopefully that really helps. Um, okay, looking through again. Um, Leone Suzanne. Hi, Amy. I made the big move. Congrats. <laughs> I leaned into my relationship and I'm following my purpose more and more. Um, will I have another baby? So um, it's interesting. You know, we don't know. I don't think that we've met or that I know you in your personal life, but um, I see two spirits. I'm not sure like right now your children that you have, but I see a younger female and then a little bit older male energy. So if you already have a male and female, this might be your two children, but that's what I see around. And then I see the number three, which to me feels like about a three year time for you. So I, I'll just tell you what I saw. The little boy, little girl, the number three. So you can kind of interpret that and see how that makes sense. And hopefully that gives you your message. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got right now. Um, Hi, White Wolf. Oh, hello. Thank you so much. Um, White Wolf is saying that they love essential oils, clove, peppermint, and other fall smells. Mm, oh my gosh. Yeah, I really feel like I need to uh, decorate a little bit. I live in Texas. It's been warm and I've been thinking it's summer. <laughs> What's this like fall holiday that I'm missing out on? But now it got cold. So now it's like, yeah, I think I can bring in some of these fall senses it's like through smell and feeling it so thank you uh thank you nurse glitter thank you for the badge uh you guys are so sweet that's so sweet i hope i didn't miss anybody but thank you for the badges i really appreciate it um let's see uh white wolf you have a question here so white wolf asks it's felt like a storm of things around my life is the storm or avalanche of stuff moving out please Oh, yeah. Okay, let me fill into that for you. It's so interesting. Um, at some point, it hit you like solar plexus, heart, kind of that region. But now it's all up in your mind. Like I'm feeling it all up in my mind, trying to sort it out. Really clearing the brain will help you let that go. So if there's... So this is Archangel Jeremy and he helps us with transitions. If there's anything that you need to remember or the wisdom to acquire from it or to work it out mentally, put it on paper. I'm also seeing dance out your emotions, like literally dance. And then I'm also seeing forms of expression that would be artistic in nature. So painting or pastels, getting it out through color. Um, so ways to clear it out of your energy and your mental body. Um, will help you because sometimes things happen and we get stuck in that energy and time can go on. Like it could be two years from now and we're still feeling something. So while the experience is moving on that timeline, it's still active and present within our being, within our consciousness. And so they're speaking about ways of clearing it out of the brain, clearing it out of the mental body, feeling finally like, oh, at peace and letting your lower chakra settle down a little bit. I would say um, Tibetan bowls and tuning forks. Those are the kind of sound instruments I'm seeing. 
And there's something also, hold on, because I'm hearing. Yeah, actually use both, but play one note and let that energy go all the way through. So like maybe start on one hemisphere and let it flow all the way through. When you do a tuning fork, the sound waves continue for some time after we physically with our ears can hear it. So tone it and then wait and then do it again. But go from one side and then if see how you feel. <laughs> let it go, visualize it, letting it go. Just release and let it go. And then if you wanna balance it out, come from the other side. But I'm seeing a tuning fork and I'm also seeing a Tibetan bowl. So if you don't have any of these sound instruments, you can go online and find like the recording of them. It will help you. I think if you could find something that's actually a present physical sound instrument, it will help you a lot more. But we do what we can do with what we have. So you're talking about letting it go, like balancing the brain, letting it go. Um, and that will really help you to move forward. So hopefully that helps. One last thing is if you go like on Spotify and maybe I'll put it in the, okay, so I'll put a playlist in stories after so you can tap into it. I have a playlist. Um, it's all like mantra tones and sounds. There's even the sound bowls for the chakras. And so if you go into Spotify and you listen to that, you can start repeating the mantras, like singing them, and that will vibrate from within some of those thoughts out. That can be really beneficial for you. They're saying it's an organic, natural way of using your own body as the tool and a system to help heal itself. So think about mantras, and I'll put that link for sure afterwards. So, And if you're catching the replay, um, I'll save it in highlights. So <laughs> you'll have it. You'll have it there. Um, oh, absolutely. You said that helps. Okay, perfect for White Wolf. Thank you. Thanks for confirming. Hi, Philly girl. Hi, Yogi. Hello, new friends. Hi. So happy y'all are here. So I have a few more minutes and then um, my family will be getting home. And if you caught the last live, my dog just goes ballistic. She just gets so excited when the garage door opens. <laughs> so you might hear her whining and singing and dancing around. Um, I usually just take um, the ones in the question mark box, but I see two of them here in the comment threads. So let me, um, okay, let me say um, forever learning. Why um, voices? Why do I hear them today? Why did you hear voices today? Your aura is open. So you want to work to clear your aura and then visualize a shield around it, a bright shield around it. Whoever you choose to work with in spiritual dimensions, um, if they've proven to work for you, you can use them. But for something like this, if I were to select Archangel, Metatron's coming through. He's kind of like a no BS Archangel and he helps us filter through the riffraff and he'll say, he, like when I work with him and he comes in, he says, what is healthy? What is appropriate? And what is honoring your free will? So when spirits and energies and thought forms and entities come into our space, that's um, filtering or let's see. Okay, he's saying when it comes into our space and we can't filter it out, then it's a violation of your autonomy. So you could work with him to help release it and then work with him and Archangel Jeremy L because there's some kind of wisdom for you to understand like how did this happen? Um, whether it's to heal it so you have a full grasp or if it's like, hey, Hey friend, maybe next time let's not party so hard or I'm not saying you party, it's just examples because <laughs> things can come in when we party. Maybe like don't party so hard or maybe eat really healthy. Hey, you were super stressed, your aura got thinned out. Um, so there's something within that for you to really contemplate on. So that would be Jeremy L. Metatron will help clear it out and set um, kind of like a, a definitive message to these energies like hey not cool time to go and then Raphael for healing for healing it up and if you feel <laughs> if you feel like working with star beings I'm getting Pleiadian and Arcturian energy and some Syrian can come in and rewire and rework your grid in the aura to stabilize it 
So the reason you're hearing messages is because you have a big opening in your energy field and there's a lot of commotion and a lot of chitter chatter and a lot of spirits talking at you. So that's why it's not, it's not you, it's somebody else. So just kind of be like, wait a minute. I don't really know if I resonate with that or if those are my thoughts or the messages. So sounds like you know that because you're asking why you're hearing voices, but that's why. So hopefully that helps. And then there's one here, um, and then I'll go back to the question mark box for the time that we have, but um, I'm gonna say your name wrong, maybe Palinar07. I've been on sick leave due to mental stress. Will it go well when I return in January? Yeah, 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 it can, it will but take some action to help support that. Eat really healthy, like forget the um, toxicity in foods that have a lot of additives in it. Eat really healthy. So natural food that you can grow in your garden, right? Um, fill and recharge your chakras and then also boundaries on what you'll put up with. So if you were overwhelmed in the past and everybody was coming at you and talking and bringing all their problems, Feel free to say, hi, thanks. I'm focusing on something else right now. I'll let you know if I have time to return to that or to address this, right? So um, if it's your job, like if you're in an HR position and it is your job to address complaints or stuff like that, they're saying structure it like, hi, let me put you in the queue. <laughs> Working on this right now. It's something just so you don't get overwhelmed. So they want you to structure everything so you could clearly see it. Um, but you have a lot of awareness around it and time to amplify, okay, two words are coming here, emphasize and enhance your energy body. And that will help you so that you don't feel like, okay, like, you know, like you've just, you've expensed all of your energy and you can't anymore. So yeah, it's all about preparing ahead of time as you go back into it. And so setting up boundaries and parameter for how much that you really are gonna require of yourself. Um, so yeah, April, hi. Will you be doing another retreat late next year? <laughs> oh girl, I don't have anything planned, but you know, I'm not opposed to it. So I'm just getting through this season and see what spirit leads. Um, I do feel like I'll be doing some more things um, in the Texas area. Well, it's a whole state, but okay, so Texas. So I would say Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, those cities uh, will be coming up and those will be like smaller intimate events. So I'll share them when I have them. Um, but as far as like for the late next year, I don't have anything planned, but I'm open to ideas and requests and we'll see what spirit says. <laughs> so right now I don't have anything for you to like go sign up on, but yeah, I'll let you know. I'll probably put it here on Instagram and my website. So, okay, let's see. Oh, let me, I'm just going to tap this little button so I can stay. See, let's me delete it so I can stay. I can stay aligned. Um, Ms. Liz, oh, eight. any messages for me? I've been working with new energies and I just want to, oh, want to know how it will go. Um, yeah, you're in a space of like these new frequencies tapping on your aura and like, hi, and you're like, hello. So you're still in the greeting stage. Um, it's going to be a minute, like three weeks at least. And then you're gonna talk to it a little bit more and, and say, how do you wanna work with me? And so then you're gonna do collaboration with this energy through conversation to see what's the best way that it wants to come through. Um, you know, that's what we talked about at the beginning, the structure. And this is exactly what we talked about at the beginning of getting a heads up. It's like feeling like it's almost time to step into it, but then thinking and understanding how and what that can look like. So that's where you're at right now. Um, it'll go beautifully, but it's not, nothing's concrete yet and how you're going to share that with the world. So let it flow through um, and don't, like, not, I don't wanna say don't, let me take it this uh, step back. The sentence I would prefer to say is, let it flow through and let your voice and your intentions be heard. What works best for you? what like you know what you would enjoy so how will that align with your schedule or your energy reserve or the community you want to work with 
So, yeah. Yeah, it looks really promising, but like you're really at the beginning stages with it, which is good because so, it just means there's so much more to come. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, let's see. La, la, la. Okay, um, Rafi. Hi, Amy. I felt like this move from California to Texas was needed. <laughs> yes. Like before you even, I finish reading, I get a big smile. I'm like, yeah. So do your guides have any messages for me as far as the reason for the move? Yeah, they're saying um, it's multifaceted, like there's many layers to that. So you're moving for a reset. You're also moving to support, um, well, okay, let's slow to the reset. You're clearing stuff out and then you're gonna really go deeper within yourself, kind of like reestablish the relationship with yourself. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of this chat tonight. If you got on afterwards, you can go back. It was that we go through these stages of self-care, self-realization, self-understanding, these inner conversations where we're like, okay, what's going on in the world out there? And how do I fit in with me so that I know who I am and everything's aligned? And so that's a part of your reset is clearing and reestablishing like, um, this connection to yourself is what I'm hearing. And then the second part was that there's an aspect of that that you can share with community in Texas that will really be super beneficial. Um, but the balance is important like you've up leveled because now they're calling you to make sure that you can offer things without over giving your energy. <laughs> the whole theme of tonight, yay. <laughs> I like, I just love how it's coming through in different like ways of it being shared, but um, yeah, so you're here, you're having a reset, you're gonna learn more about yourself. Probably in April through August, you're gonna start working more in, or just seeing in your life, like how your gifts and skill sets, the beautiful energy that you have is helping your community, okay? So helping that physical space where you went. And also you don't have to limit it to just like that physical location because in some way or another, I see you're gonna make a connection where it goes online. Um, maybe you'll be referred to people or you'll connect to others, but you're also gonna um, connect to others that aren't in that local location. But um, at that point you already would have had like all of this awareness and um, foundation within yourself and everything playing out. Um, like it feels really sound and it feels like the, that would be the next step or space to flow into. So yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> I love this. Yeah, I love this. So I'm not going to over promise, but it kind of feels like maybe Fridays will be my day that I come on. Um, so if, but I'm not going to like commit cause I just have to go with when energy calls me. So, um, but if you guys want to chat on the next live, just put notifications on and it will let you know when I'm live. Um, if you want a personal private session with me, I'm actually having a holiday special right now. So the link is in my bio or you can go to amysikarski.com. Oh yeah, I forgot. I just want to share, just got put it out there. Um, I don't do any soliciting through direct messages. I think I have like five or seven fake scam pages pretending to be me right now. So if you're getting messages and they're asking you to send donation or pay through PayPal or Zelle or Venmo, that's not how I go. It's strictly through the website. Um, you pick the service, you pick the schedule, and you pay that way. So if anything else, you know it's not me. But yeah, so, and then also I have the podcast, so y'all might enjoy it. Like I'm coming up close to 40 episodes right now, and um, it's all kind of uh, designed to support all of you like all of us that are here and understand energy and healing and what does it mean okay I feel healed like I worked so hard what does it mean now like that kind of a thing so we had a beautiful one today that released and it was so cool with Lauren and she was just talking about some of her astral travel experiences and yo this happens like when we are asleep some of us are actually working in the ethers and um so yeah, it's fascinating and it's so cool to hear from others 
their experiences and be like, oh my gosh, I've had that happen too. <laughs> or, whoa, that's next level. That's really cool. Tell me more. So it's Spirit and Soul Healing Podcast and some of the episodes are on YouTube, but a lot of them are wherever you can find a podcast. So like um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of that. But yeah, it was so cool to connect. Um, if you're looking for an energy clearing or guided energy session, I have tons of free um, meditations at spiritschoolonline.com. But um, yeah, and also if there's a topic you want me to chat about, let me know. And I'll see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great weekend. Big hugs. <laughs> Alrighty, bye-bye.